Yes, sir, -y Bob, my friends. In today's video, the young whippersnappers in our audience are gonna have a look at how the previous generation lived. Because believe it or not, we did have your mobile computers. It's just that to say that they weren't quite as sleek and sexy as a modern ultrabook would be a gross understatement. So step one, I guess, is to get this puppy booted up. Now, this might not stand out to some of you, but one of the first things I noticed about this thing is the power cord. Fascinating, isn't it? It's just a normal power cord. There's no external power brick. This thing has an internal power supply. Are you kidding me? All right, I'm gonna get this plugged in. Now, Brian, the electrician, who I borrowed this thing from, he's got like a tech museum in his basement, that guy. Uh, he actually told me the battery on this thing does work, but lithium batteries don't age very well. So I'd be surprised if it stays on longer than a couple minutes. So we're gonna run off wall power here. This is like so exciting. He also told me that he preloaded my favorite game on it, which, I don't remember talking to him about retro games at any point, so let's see what he put on here. Wow. Is that 80 megs of RAM? That's actually pretty respectable for a computer of this era. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's okay, you know? Windows 95. So that makes this thing significantly older than Jake. Like we literally have people working here who are younger than this laptop. I haven't heard that sound in so long. Uh, all right, so this is it. This is the desktop experience. Does it go any brighter? No, it does not. Wow. That is not a fantastic display. So I just wanted to check that RAM amount and I realized I don't actually remember how to access Task Manager in Windows 95. You can't just right click the taskbar. Monitors the system resources your programs are using. Like any program, the resource meter uses system resources when it's running. This may cause your computer to run more slowly. Isn't that great? Back when we had like 100 megahertz CPUs, your computer would warn you about opening up resource monitor because it could affect your resource consumption. Wow, that is a fairly rudimentary resource meter. <laughs> well, your system resources, they're, they're 86% free. As for your user resources, same thing. Why don't we try one of the other similar looking things here? How about system monitor? Okay, that's more like it. So we are using about 40 megs of RAM on what we don't know. I tried to two finger swipe to scroll and all I did was move my icons around. Just like, yeah, yeah, sure, you know what? It gives you an appreciation for, you know, modern grid arrangements and everything snapping into place, right? How big's our drive? Wow! Four gigs! Fat32 storage, isn't that beautiful? I mean, to put that in context, this Ultrabook has four times that in system memory. All right, so we're fired up. Let's get into uh, what Brian thinks is my favorite game. And actually, okay, there's no way he would have guessed this, but I actually played so many hours of 1602 AD back when the only gaming computer I had was a Pentium 90 desktop that I inherited from my uncle. Is sound on? If you don't happen to have something playing while you're making adjustments, you can press down for a test tone. I'm gonna need a mouse though, in order to play this game. USB didn't come around until Windows 98 SE, if I recall correctly. This laptop doesn't have USB. Actually, no, hold on. Okay. 
Ow, my pinky. So that's labeled mouse keyboard. That is a PS2 port. And I happen to have in my bag of wonders, a PS2 to USB adapter. Uh, I'm gonna have to go digging deeper into the bag of wonders and see if I have a PS2 mouse. Okay, well, we didn't find a PS2 mouse, but I did find a ball mouse with USB. So I am hoping that this will, hey, not bad. Yes, my friends, these were great for all sorts of things. Picking up all the dust off your desk and putting it in one convenient place to be picked off and disposed of later. Uh, throwing these nice heavy rubber balls at people you didn't like. Oh man, got like hair and gunk wrapped around this. Gross. Before I settle in for my nostalgic gaming session though, actually, why don't we like take a closer look at this thing? It's got some real problems compared to modern computers. These bezels take up like as much of the top of the unit as the freaking screen does. They're so big. This touchpad is abominable. Though with that said, I do appreciate the inclusion of dedicated left and right clicks here. Speakers suck and this thing is freaking heavy. Like it is, it is chunky. Like you were carrying a briefcase if you had one of these, but it has some advantages compared to modern devices. So even though we weren't really able to plug in our, you know, modern mouse to it very easily, the IO on this thing is substantial. So check this out. You've got your floppy disk reader. You've got not one, but two. PCMCIA expansion slots, so these could actually be used back in the day to add new ports to laptops. Go figure, right? We've got our RJ11 modem port. We've got the PS2 port we ended up using. Check this out. That, my friends, yes, that is infrared. So I believe, though, instead of being used as just like a remote control or to like control your TV. This was actually for wireless data transmission. <laughs> um, yeah, I know, right? Uh, we've got our printer port. We've got a dock port, VGA out, uh, serial, and then, oh, moving around. Finally, my arm is like actually falling asleep holding this thing up like this. Uh, we've got our CD-ROM drive. And finally, headphone, microphone jacks. Yes, my friend, a headphone jack. And check this out. Here's a feature you haven't seen in a while. A removable battery. Now, I mean, 2.7 amp hours. That is not a lot. And it obviously isn't gonna work very well anymore, but hey, it had it. Oh, wow, seriously? When there's an auto run, you can't click anything behind it. I... <laughs> Multitasking. There's so many things I completely take for granted these days. All right, let's fire up some Corel WordPerfect. So back to the things that are good about it. This keyboard is amazing. Compared to modern keyboards, you might as well have a mechanical keyboard in your laptop. Like, this is flipping awesome. The layout's great. It's got dedicated keys for home end, page up, page down. It's got, look at this travel. Listen to that, like that, that is a laptop keyboard. And check this out. It's even got remappable shortcut buttons. Like, come on, 1996 wasn't such a bad time. I mean, yeah, there's no Windows key. You know what though, 1602 actually can be run on relatively modern machines. And there is a game that I legitimately have not played since like 2002 when the classroom computers actually ran Windows 95, Windows 98. And it's called Liero. Um, unfortunately, getting it seems like it might be a little tricky. So a lot of you might not realize this, but check this out. Windows 95 is actually pre like the blue Internet Explorer icon. This is when like Internet Explorer was the name because it was Internet Mail, Internet News, and Internet Explorer. What does Internet News even look like? What do you, please select a folder where Internet Mail should keep your message. What are you even talking about? Internet News configuration. Holy crap. I think we're fine. 
Um, so we're gonna have to download the game separately and then just copy it over to here. Except one small problem. Even though the game is small enough to fit on a single floppy disk, I don't have any floppy disks. Does this pop out? Is this floppy drive removable? Holy crap it is. There must be like a catch somewhere for it. It definitely, can't. anyway. Um, also, RJ45 was considered a fancy pants feature back then, none of that. And of course, even if Windows 95 did support USB storage, it doesn't have any USB ports. And Wi-Fi? Oh, forget about it. That was still a twinkle in the eye of an engineer somewhere. Like that, that's not a thing. I'll be right back. Fortunately, what is a thing is this old external CD burner that I have and this spindle of CDRs that I happen to have kicking around. Like I still remember when if you had a CD burner, you were the coolest kid in class. Like, yeah, they were slow and the software was atrocious. Also, the blank discs were expensive. So when a burn failed, it was like actually a big deal. Like, okay, there goes a few more dollars. Great, thanks for that. But you could move a whopping 650 megabytes of data in between machines or store it safely. And that is exactly what we are gonna do. Now, I don't actually have burning software installed on this laptop because why would I? But I seem to recall Microsoft building it in at some point. Okay, how do you wanna use this disc? With a CD, DVD player, Liero. Manage, finish burning. Okay. I'm burning a CD. It's been a while. Now when I say these things were slow, like I really mean it. I'm going at a speed that is about eight times what we would have had back then in the early days of CD burning. I'm only writing like a mega files and it's still taking this long because there was the preamble and the, um, like the, the finishing process that had to be done on the disc regardless of how much you wrote to it. So let's see if this works. Fortunately, if it didn't, I've got this whole spindle that definitely is not earmarked for any other purpose. So Brian must have actually burned this for me, that's awesome. Thanks, dude. Hey, there we go. Holy crap, I think it worked. Liero Windows 98. Give her a second here, gotta ramp up that disc. Okay, is this gonna work? Oh, IRQ5! Extended memory successfully initialized, press any key. Oh yeah, Liero V1.33, baby. Hey Jake, you wanna play some Liero? Liero. So it's local multiplayer only. Oh, so am I like wazed and you're... Um, well, yeah. you're RFDG, and then you need fire, change weapons, and jump. If it helps at all, mine's really not much better. Left. So there's a mini-map down here. Wait, I think I played this before. No, nah, there's a way to dig fast. Ah, there it is! You hold the direction you want to go, and then you press back. So you, like, you spam back. I think this keyboard has ghosting issues. Oh, I see. So only one of us can, like, dig at a time. Get some explosives going on up in this biz. I'm stuck, oh no. Oh crap. <laughs> that was not what I meant to do. Oh, oh crap. Get slaughtered. That slow reload is killing me here. No, I can't even aim. Oh no. Oh, right, the hook shot. What? I can't change my weapons because you're holding down keys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is no. A match. <laughs> I can't change my weapon. No, ah, you're done. <laughs> We have 14 lives room here all day. Uh, yeah, when you're better at the game and the controls are working, it actually goes pretty quick. What? Oh, the grasshopper is really powerful. What the hell? Okay, next point wins, I guess. Yeah. Shoot. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and I'm done. Thanks, bud. Now, one of the other things I used my laptop for when I was a teenager was looking at pictures. Um, so the problem, though, is that when you... Did that just use Internet Explorer to open a picture? It did. It is downloading it 
from the CD-ROM drive. Give her a minute. Um, oh, yeah, there it goes. She's loading. She's loading in. Skin tones were really not handled very well on the default setting. So uh, you can hardly tell because the display is so bad, but if you zoom in on this, can you tell how little color depth there is to this thing? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh man, look at it like loading in on the edges of the frame as you, you see that? Yeah. Oh, it's spectacular. Now fortunately, many older computers, if you went into the properties much like you would today, allowed you to, here we go, change the color palette from the default 256 to high color, or even true color. Now, with that said, that didn't actually seem to do much for me, and it might have been Windows 98 where they had a built-in picture viewer. I, can I open this with something else? Like, is this something that's been altered? Yeah, this is clearly no better. The, the bottleneck here may actually be the display. You guys will just have to take my word for it. Um, 16 or better yet, 24-bit color was, was definitely a much better experience when looking at pictures on your laptop. Uh, better representation of skin tones for sure. That is assuming that your dial-up internet connection could even download anything high res, high, high color. I think that's enough of me fooling around with this thing. Let's get down to business and play some 1602 AD. Is the sound not working? Did I turn it off or something? I remember this! Uh, it's not a form of DRM or anything. It's just that the sound assets were too big to actually copy over to the hard drive. In-game music wouldn't work without the disk in. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and close down the program and try that one more time. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's really funny. Single player. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, lame. The yellow and blue player got big ships aye, aye, to start. Captain. So settling a southern island is good late game because you've got like cotton and all that kind of stuff, but actually northern islands were better for food production. We have to uh, explore the island. One moment, please. This island's resources have been determined. Ooh, cocoa and cotton, 100% yield. Has ore deposits. Oh, and there's ore! There we go. Build a warehouse. The controls are like so unintuitive. Man, I might go home tonight and like legit play this game. Let's get a forester's hut going on over here. I won't subject you guys to any more of that though. So that's pretty much it. That's a look at not the laptop that I owned as a kid, but one that is pretty darn close. It was a hand-me-down actually from my half sister's dad. So it was already worthless then and it's even more worthless now. So thanks for watching you guys. Thanks to Brian for uh, giving me this old clunker of a laptop to play with here. And uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, you can hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, you can hit subscribe. If you disliked it, well, you can also hit that button. But uh, we're gonna have, wow, I did my entire outro out of order, whatever, go buy merch and um, um, join our forum, yes.